Last fall, I built Log Cabin 1 and it quickly became my most popular video. Then, in January, I built Log Cabin number 2 and it kicked Log Cabin 1's butt. Whether you've seen those builds or this is the first time you've found your way to my channel, welcome. I'm Unite the Clans and today, geeks, we are going to be building the long-awaited Log Cabin number 3. We're going to be doing it here on the amazing Ragnarok map, overlooking these beautiful waterfalls in the heart of the Redwoods. This is going to be a large wood and stone cabin with an amazing paint job. And if you are still watching, it means you dig the look of this build with paint or without it. Hang with me throughout this tutorial, geeks. We'll do it step by step, and by the end, you will have something that looks just like this. Let's start this thing off right, Geeks. You're gonna need some foundations. I would recommend using thatch to begin. You start with a two wide line, add a four wide line of foundations behind it. And behind that, we're going to extend it even further. So what you'll be attaching all in all to the two and the four is a six by three. So there's your strip of two, your strip of four, and now six by three. With that done, your build is going to be looking like this, but we ain't done. You got to make sure you have room for these foundations as well. This is why I recommend building in thatch first, because if you get this far and you can't place these last foundations, you'd be very, very mad. So add two stone ones on the corners, extending off the back, and then a U-shape of wooden ones that will be forming our back porch. So that is the foundation. Once you got it built, come back to me for the next step of the build. All right, guys, and now we dive into the first floor. For this step, you are going to need stone window frames and stone walls. We're gonna do four stone window frames in a U-shape around these first two foundations we placed, like so, and then you're gonna grab walls. You're gonna leave a space right here, and then you're gonna encircle basically the entire build. We'll leave one spot at the back for a back door. I'll show you, we're just coming around to that part right now and then you're going to be able to go all the way around the build just leaving a couple gaps for doors so let's go all the way around until we are one away from our window frames and that is how it looks so you see three gaps in this uh, first floor of walls right now and we are going to fill these three gaps with stone door frames uh, we've got two on the front, and we've got one here on the back leading to our back porch. You are also going to need some thatch door frames. All the thatch in the building materials list at the top of the comments uh, is temporary. So this is the scaffold on which we will build, be building the upper level. So you got to get it right. We're going to do four in line centered on the back of our house uh, with the thatch side facing the uh, the back wall. And then we'll do the same thing here, but with the thatch facing the front wall. So four in a row, four in a row, and then we'll do two right here, like so. I use the door frame so you can still move in and out freely while we work on the build. These will all come out later. This is how you should be looking. Now, for this stage, you're going to want some sloped wooden walls. We are going to be putting an arch on the front of our house. We're also going to need a lot of full-on wood walls and some more thatched door frames. These door frames, like I said, are the scaffolding upon which we will build the upper levels. So you got to get this in here. All right, like that. Now it's time for some wooden walls. Let's add another story to this place. So the wooden walls are going to encircle the build. You're going to go over top of the two thatched door frames like that. And then you're going to circle the entire build. Everywhere you have a wall below, go ahead and place a wood wall facing the regular direction on top of it. I will speed that up for you guys. And this is how you should be looking. Your second story is complete. All right, for this step, guys, we're going to be using some thatch roofs. Now, once again, these will be temporary, but they are incredibly important. So you're going to put a line of six like that across the front of the house and uh, then circle the outside of the house. When I built Log Cabin 2, guys, I had inside-out walls. 
and I just flipped them using the E key, and that causes so many problems for people. I have learned, I have improved, so much so that I want to redo Log Cabin 2. This is the proper way to get inside out walls. You probably noticed that at the beginning of the build, all the unique textures we had going on. Well, these thatch roofs are going to give us the ability to get the look we want without messing up all our snap points. So for this stage, guys, we're gonna grab a couple of sloped wooden walls. And the key here is to get the outer texture uh, facing in and the inner texture facing out. So let's take a look. That is the sloped wall left. And then we're going to do a sloped wall right on this side. Uh, and once again, get the angle like this and make sure the out outer texture is in and the inner texture is out. That's how we'll be doing the rest of this. All right, guys, you're going to grab some more thatch door frames. And this is the beginning of inside outing our walls. So get on the inside and look at those temporary thatch roofs on the outside and snap your uh, door frames to them. You'll notice they are facing the opposite direction as the ones below. Just flipping them would mess up all your snap points. So let's go ahead and get those in place, facing the, the backwards way, basically. Then we're gonna come across with wooden ceilings across the top, like so. Those will be supporting some window frames shortly. And now we dive into inside outing our walls. Just like we did with these thatched door frames, we're gonna be placing these by looking at those thatch roofs on the outside, and we should get this inside out texture. Now when we do this, we are having the exact same snap point as the walls below, so you won't get all kinds of trouble when it comes time to build a roof. This is the way you do it. Props to the great monkey puzzle and a rally the geek. Between the two of them, they introduced me to this concept, and I wish I knew it when we did Log Cabin 2. Would have saved a lot of you guys a lot of trouble. Let's speed this up for you. Like so. That is it inside outed wood walls all around your third story except at the back there we got some work to do at the back are you enjoying this i know you are so click the like button and then when we come back we're going to be working on this greenhouse so let's take a break brb Welcome back guys. We are about to put some work into this built-in greenhouse. It's one of the cooler features of Log Cabin 3. We're starting with some uh, greenhouse ceilings and greenhouse door frames. Do them just like this. Then we're going to come down to the end. We're going to use a temporary thatch sloped roof, doesn't matter, or wall, sorry, temporary thatch sloped wall, doesn't matter what side you put it on. Uh, on the other side, go and put a wood wall. It will have the same inside out texture because you're looking at that greenhouse ceiling. And now that that's in place, we're going to want some sloped greenhouse roofs. So we'll come across like this with four of them. And you're going to have room for four medium crop plots so you can grow each of the main crops inside your house. Don't you love that? All right. So let's come down to this end. Now this can get tricky. You want to replace that thatch sloped wall with a wood wall. And then we come back to the inside, more greenhouse ceilings. We'll do another row of four. This is gonna be how you access it. And this will be the first of a couple little lofts inside the house. So that is how your greenhouse looks. I think we've done a pretty good job. Um, I'm not doing an interior on this build. It's a big, long tutorial. So if you're really interested in seeing how I do my interior, be sure to let me know in the comments and we'll come back and we'll deck this place out. All right, guys, so here is how things look. It looks like a mess right now, but a lot of this thatch is going to come out and it's going to come out very soon. And uh, this build will start coming together. And you're gonna start to get some ideas of the shape, the unique shape of this roof as we add a peak. So a couple of walls and uh, a couple of each of the sloped walls, and you're gonna add a peak to this side. And then we'll head to the other side of the house and we're gonna add a second peak. Now, the thing that made Log Cabin 2, I think the thing that made it popular was the unique paint scheme. I ended up painting that inside out wood in cantaloupe and it gave it kind of the look of that polished pine on the outside of a, a traditional log cabin. And, and we're looking to get the same effect here. So we have lots of inside out walls. Those will be getting paint at the later stages of this build. But I'm going to build it with you guys completely naked first so you can see how it looks in just wood and stone and maybe you'll like it best that way. For me, I love a paint job. So we're going to dive into this chunk of the build. Get on the inside and face out. That way these door frame, sorry, window frames will be snapping to those inside out thatch walls we previously placed like that. Looking good. And uh, that is going to be a little overlook. And that is our, our sort of our second balcony. Uh, a second loft inside the house. So now we need some thatch roofs. 
Before we can take out thatch, we have to add some more. And we're gonna do a little little L shape, little three around the edge of these uh, wooden ceilings that we placed uh, just before the windows. And this is gonna provide some support for what we're doing next. So an inside out wall. Once again, get to the inside, look at that outer thatch temporary roof, and that's how you'll get your inside out texture. Uh, you can do walls here. I, I think walls are perfect. I would not do a window frame. And that is how we look at the end at the end of this step. All right, lots of thatch, lots of mess, but we are going to be bringing this thing together. So this this is where you guys are going to start to get a look at at um, how I put this together. So we're going to want the inside out texture for these, and you're going to be continuing the uh, shape of the slope you have on the most outer wall uh, for this one. And the cool thing about this house is it has two peaks, and the two peaks sort of crisscross each other. We're going to be getting into that here in this next step. All right, so here is how it stands. It's about time to get into some funky stuff. One of the beautiful things about Ragnarok is that it includes the desert. You can get access to sand, cactus sap, and all the things you need to make adobe walls. And this kind of double peak roof the only way to do it is with adobe walls. So you're gonna need a few of these. If you're building this anywhere but Ragnarok or uh, Scorched Earth, you may have some trouble, um, but this is key. If you can't do this, you might have some real trouble bringing this build to life. So the adobe is our next step. One of the amazing things about adobe walls is that they can be layered uh, face to face. So stand on the inside and face that, uh, uh, thatch ceiling and then do the same here and now we have two walls facing each other You can't do that with stone and you can't do that with wood unless you do it first with adobe So this is how we get this double peak. So we're gonna put a sloped wall there That's a slope wall left and so is that and they can cross over each other and give you this truly unique shape Now you couldn't do this if you started with wood But if you start with thatch we're going to be able to come through and replace the thatch with wood and hack the game. So let's go do the same thing on this side. These are your sloped walls, right? So you're going to have one there. Uh, actually, did I screw that up? I, no, no, that's perfect. Okay, wonderful. So the inside out, uh, we got the inside texture facing in and the inside texture facing out. And that is what we need to accomplish this. Now we just used Adobe walls and sloped walls. We now need wood walls and sloped walls, and we are gonna be tricking Ark into placing these face to face. All right, let's dive back in. So wood walls, sloped left and sloped right, the exact same pieces we just used in Adobe, and this is how you hack Ark. You ready for this, guys? Uh, you may need a thatch ceiling, so I'm gonna add one of those to my bar as well. Stand on this side and face out. Stand on this side and face out, like so. Now you have a in double layered wood wall, inside out and regular way, amazing. And I just messed that up. So the look that you are gonna want is not that one, that is wrong. That's right, I used the wrong sloped walls. So I'm gonna grab the opposite ones, I'm gonna try and fix this, and then I'm gonna show you how integral this is to the design. And because I screwed it up, we'll go do the other side together. But grab some more sloped walls. We're going to complete these peaks, and you're going to start to get a shape for this double peak roof. So grab the left side one right here, and another left side one, I think it is. Is that right? Yes, it is. Okay, perfect. So that is your double peak. Now, let's go over to the other side, and hopefully I will do this properly this time. So let's grab a wood wall. We'll stand on this side. We'll look through the adobe, and then we'll come to this side. We'll look through the adobe, and boom, double layered walls. Let's hack some arc. Okay, now, that's a slope wall left, and so is this. Okay, so the other side is slope wall right, these are slope wall left, and if you needed to, if you were having trouble snapping those, you could put a thatch ceiling right there, and that would give you uh, probably the snap point you need, but it's not essential. Let's continue this double peak, and you guys will get a look. You will get a feel. The double peak, it's fantastic. I've never done anything like this before, and I hope you guys are able to accomplish it like I have. Every time I do a tutorial, people struggle with some aspect of it. If that's you, don't just write help me in the comments. There is a link for my Discord community. It is full of passionate ARC builders. If you're having trouble, come in there and join us in the ARC Building Advice channel. 
ask for help, and my fans, my people, my supporters will help you. I love them. They're amazing. All right, guys, I think we're ready for another break. So let's take it, and when we come back, we are going to really bring this place to life by removing a lot of the thatch. And welcome back, guys. This place looks like a true mess right now. We really need to get rid of some of this thatch. Most of it is no longer necessary. So if you join me, we are going to dive in uh, for this third segment of the video. We're going to be removing a lot of the thatch. We're going to be bringing this place to its true glory. It's hard to tell right now how this place is going to look. Once we get rid of some of this, it's going to start to have some life to it. Now, I did thatch ceilings here. I think I need a ceiling here. So I'm gonna add in a couple of wood ones on both sides, and we'll do that uh, just so that uh, we're sure we've got support. I would hate to take something down, have it collapse, and have to take a bunch of steps back. So I'm being extra careful. Put a couple of these in there, and let's make sure they face the right direction. Like so, I like it. All right, so with those ones done, I think the next step is probably to remove uh, some of the ones on the outside, I'm pretty sure all these windows are supported. So I'm pretty sure we can take out those door frames. Uh, before we do, let's take a look at this. Those door frames down there are supporting the wood above them. But once we get these sloped stone roofs, those will actually support the two wood walls they intersect with, these two. So I'm pretty sure we can take these out. Now keep in mind, if you were to take out the stone ceiling, these guys, you would lose the wood that they're attached to. So let's head back outside. I know for sure we can remove all of these ones around the outside. They were just there to let us snap these walls inside out. And look, we've already done it. So I'm going to take all these out. I'll speed it up for you, but I want to... You know what? I ain't speeding anything up. I want to show you guys. So let's leave these ones on the back for the moment. I'm pretty sure we can take them out. And let's get rid of this guy. And you know what? Yep, let's get rid of all of these. All four of these over your back porch. And we'll continue around the outside. So I'm keeping you with me. This is not a step I want to speed up and have you guys miss something important and have the whole damn build collapse on you. So let's go ahead and take these out slow and steady. We'll do it together. So what do we got left for thatch? Um, let's get uh, some stone sloped roofs. And we're going to add in... You know what? Let's get rid of these first. I know we can get rid of these. Okay. And I'm pretty sure... One, two... Three, if anything collapses, it'll be right now. And we good. Amazing. So uh, I know we can take out these. Boom. Anything gonna collapse? Nope, we're good. Ooh, gee. Okay, that's thunder. We're good. We're good. Uh, yeah. Thought it was coming down on my head for a second there. Grab some slope stone roofs. So we got arches going in different directions. And here I just did sort of a lean-to style roof. I like it. Add some diversity, some shape. And now... We're going to do a, uh, you're going to need four for these two outer bits. It'll be a little tough to find the snap points, but this is where those intersecting sloped walls become key. So one of them allows you to place those walls. The other, once we get rid of this and this, actually, let's come down here. Can we get rid of these guys yet? That's the only thatch left. I don't know if we can. Uh, I want to make sure, because this is supporting the greenhouse. That would be a very expensive mistake. All right, we'll finish roofing. So you see the first of our sloped, uh, intersecting slope supports these outer walls, and um, the other is going to support a different peaked roof right over here. So let's go four across on this side, and I might have to leave the back open. Yes, I do. Okay, so this is all we're going to do for the moment. Let's see about getting rid of the rest of that thatch. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's looking good. I hope you guys are excited for this. Lock cabins, is some people seem to like from old UTC, and it took me a long time to get around to this third one. I wanted to make sure it was good, and I want to make sure I had a design that you guys would love as much as the first two. Um, so let's continue the build. We're going to need some thatch uh, and uh, thatch ceilings, maybe, uh, and we're going to need Adobe uh, use your words. We're going to need wooden window frames. Okay. So we do not need the thatch. Wooden window frames will do the job just fine. They're snapping to the uh, greenhouse doors underneath, which have snapped to the inside out uh, thatch earlier. So that's how we look. I like it. Um, now, what we're going to do is add another strip of ceilings. So we need these for support, and this will form our third and final little loft area, just a storage loft. Um, and we'll get there when we get to the interior of this place. Let's get rid of you. Gone. 
flip. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, now it's roofed. This build is coming together, guys. We got a lot of work left to do, so I don't want you to go anywhere, and especially if you want to see the paint scheme. So let's go inside. I have figured this out. I am almost certain we can get rid of these. If something comes crashing down on my head, blame me. Wait until I've taken them out, and then you take them out. Ready? Okay, we're good. All right, no more thatch. All the temporary thatch is gone. We're good. Ready? And like a so. Nothing left. No no scaffolding left. No temporary thatch. This place looks great. Um, what we have left to do is to work on the balcony up here. Now, you see this wall above my head? If I put a staircase here, and I intend to, I can't walk through here. I get that weird thing where your head hits the wall. So I'm going to take out these two. They're, the, the slopes above us are now supported. Uh, but I want to make extra certain. So you probably don't have to do this. But I, I'm going to do it. So, oh, oh, okay. So we're going to have to sacrifice, I think, one of our stone roofs here. Apologies at taking a backward step. I know you guys hate that. So we'll put this in, and then we're going to replace that stone roof. I hope apologies for making you waste materials. Okay, so that ties us into the ceilings directly above our head, that last row. That means we can definitely take out these and not deal with any collapse. So now you have tons of head space. You won't have any trouble getting up and down. All right, guys, let's go inside. The place looks great on the outside. We have a little bit of work left to do on the inside. So the issue I was having, as I mentioned, was bumping my head, not being able to walk through here. That is solved now, and we need to add a staircase. Now, this is interesting. I'm going to be interested to see what you guys choose to do uh, for your staircase. i got three options, and I can legitimately see you using each and every one of them. This is the metal staircase. It looks perfect with the greenhouse glass. They blend beautifully. We also have wood. There is a lot of wood in this build, so having a wood staircase is probably the smart idea. Yeah, I like that. And there is also a lot of stone in this build, so why don't we try out a stone staircase? I just want to show you all your options. I don't know what you're going to choose. Let's see the stone. Let's get it. Ready? Ready? Yeah. Okay. I don't like it as much as wood. I'll tell you that. Okay, let's get rid of this, and we're going to put a wooden uh, staircase in here. That is my favorite of the three. Let me know what yours is. All right, so now we should have no trouble walking up here, and this is how you access it. Like I said, the first of a couple lofts. Let's make them more like lofts. Um, I think we're going to need some ladders, some railings. That's just about it. So we'll put a wooden ladder on the bar and a wooden railing. And I'm gonna grab some storage boxes too. I mentioned not doing an interior. There is one part of the interior I wanna do because it's pretty much the only thing you can do with it. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start with some wooden railings. Whoops, and that is wrong. Be gone, get demolished. And we're gonna encircle this entire little area, including this spot right here. And then we're gonna add a ladder. So the ladder should be snapping to the wood ceiling above it. Um, play around with the, the snap point cycling. If you can't climb your ladder, it's in the wrong spot. And now we are in this little loft. If it were me, I would use this as my bedroom. I would keep it small, I would keep it simple, and I would stash a, a bunk bed or something up here. And now you have this little loft. The only thing you could possibly use it for is storage and with small storage boxes. So I'm gonna fly. Uh, just for simplicity's sake and for speed. Uh, and we're going to cram in literally as many as I possibly can. Uh, it's probably going to be like eight. We'll find out. I am going to place all these. I'll speed it up for you. One more. That's right. Okay. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight, and nine. We got nine small storage boxes up there, guys, so you might as well do that. That's all I can think of to use this area for. If you got better ideas, be sure to let me know. All right, guys, I think it's time for another break. When we return, we are going to be building our back porch. The inside is done, and we only have a little bit left to do. So hang with me, and I have a request. If you build this in your world, tweet it at me. I'm at Unite the Clans on Twitter, hashtag Bob Ross of Arc, or find me on Instagram, Facebook, wherever you want to share your pictures, and I would love to see your version of Log Cabin number three. Let's take a break. I will be right back. Welcome back, geeks. This Log Cabin is coming to life. 
I'll ask you if you haven't done it. Share it. Tell your friends. If you used to live in boring old boxes and now you got pretty houses thanks to me, tell people. It helps this little channel grow. Um, are you going to mosey on, sir? Are you going to have to be dealt with? Go. Yeah, that's right. Get on out of here. Okay, guys, we got a back porch to design. Join me. Uh, step one, wooden fence foundations. People often miss wooden fence foundations and leave comments about how they can't place pillars. If you don't put those fence foundations in, the pillars will not go where I've just put them. But a couple of stone pillars right there are going to support a balcony. Um, before we get there, I think what I want to do is grab a couple of ramps and we'll grab some more of these wooden railings. And we're going to prep our little back porch entrance here. So the ramps occasionally give people snap point trouble. Cycle them and you should find a green one no matter how close to the ground you're your foundation is, and we'll put one on either side like that. And then we're gonna make it feel like a back deck by adding in uh, a few railings. So we'll do two on each side uh, surrounding the ramp and two here in the middle. Like that, perfect. Now we're gonna grab, I think some wooden ceilings, maybe a wooden hatch frame, and we're gonna do some work on the little balcony that sits above it. So, uh, I will also need a ladder at this stage of the build. So let's start with three wooden ceilings. Uh, we'll go one, two, and three. And then for this stage, let's go ahead and do, instead of a ceiling, a hatch frame. And we're gonna add in a little ladder to that. That's gonna let you get access to this little sort of decorative balcony. I might put a couple of chairs up here if we ever do an interior for this place. Um, but let's get this ladder in place. I like it there. And uh, four more railings. And that's it. That's your back porch, guys. Uh, this place has seriously come together. So we are back inside, and it's time to add uh, a little security. Some reinforced wooden doors. You need three of them for your three door frames, and you'll need four reinforced windows for these four stone window frames. All right, now we're gonna grab some greenhouse glass windows and we're gonna head upstairs. We have eight wooden window frames. Each and every one gets one of these greenhouse glass windows. Uh, I love the way those look. Let's come up here we will do the same. Put away your gun and three, wait, three, four, perfect. All right, so this is how things are looking with all those windows and doors in place. And that's it, guys. That is the final structural detail, and it now is time for some paint. This is mud. Go ahead and select all six regions, or if you're using a brush, do it slow and steady by hand. And this is for the foundations. You're going to do every single stone foundation in this place with all six regions in mud. Now, before I go do that, I want to show you how to paint these walls. Grab some brown paint and do just region one. If you want the inside of these walls painted as well, that's region five for the stone. And this is how we're looking. I'm going to do the rest of this. And that's how it looks. That's how your foundations look. That is unpainted in my version. Like I said, select region five if you want the brown paint to make it to the inside as well. And now, now it's time to add some color to this beauty. So paint is applying in a strange way right now to wood. So the only part of the wood I want to paint is that inside out surface. And we're painting it with tangerine. So that's region one, like that. Now, the idea is not that this looks like a painted house. The idea is that this looks like some aged logs that, that have been you know, weathering in this log cabin for years. And pine and cedar often have this orangey color to them. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so that was just region one, and you're going to do that for all your inside-out walls, and then region one and region five for your sloped stone roofs is going to be green, forest green. This was one of the signatures of Log Cabin 2, and I insist on bringing it back for the, th the threequel, the, th the third one. And that is how it looks painted. Tell me you don't love that, guys. So, shades of brown, shades of tan, tangerine on the inside-out wood, and green roofs. I love it. But there are two things that stand out to me right now. Two things that need paint desperately. One is these stone pillars. I'm going to paint all six regions in the same brown we did on the stone walls. Uh, so let's go ahead and slap that on there. One and two. And just keep these regions selected. And now it's that silvery shiny bit that is bothering me. I want to paint this so it blends in better with the wood. 
And you know what? That brown is not right. We're going to go back to the mud. And uh, like I said, all six regions, like so, that's better. That blends in so good with the unpainted wood. Yes, I love it. Okay, now, forest green. I ain't done adding pops of color. All six regions, and you're going to slap it on these greenhouse windows. One, two, three and four and we'll go do the other side together so i hope you guys are enjoying this build if you have never seen log cabin one or log cabin two i will definitely put links to those at the top of the comments along with the building materials the coordinates of this amazing redwoods lake location on ragnarok and um if you guys have been with me for this whole thing, your build should now be looking like this, and it is all but complete. We're going to do a little more paint, and we're going to do it on our reinforced wood. So this is a little tricky to work out. Um, we are going to do, uh, let's actually, let's go start with the tangerine, and we're going to paint it the same way we painted the wood. So it's region one, five, and six for the doors, which means we can do two, three, and four in forest green. Now that's for the doors. The windows are going to be a little different. So we'll keep these regions selected. We'll go slap some paint on this door right here. And we'll go put the tangerine on to back it up. And you know what? Maybe cantaloupe might look closer to the color that goes on the wood, but I like that. I like how that looks. Now, it's just five and six. If I'm not... Wait, let me... Yeah, five and six is the wood for the window frames, which means one through four is what's going to be needed to get the metal bits in forest green like that. So let's go ahead and do these other three windows. So what is that? Yeah, one through four, and then we'll grab the tangerine, and we'll do five and six, and we'll get this wood looking a beautiful shade of orange. Geeks, that was literally the final step of this build. Log Cabin 3, long awaited, is finally complete, and I hope you enjoy it. This knife has a straight edge on it, so it's very easy. Easy. YouTube thinks they know what you want to watch next, guys, but they're wrong. Popping up on your screen right now is a playlist of all my building tutorials. There are 16 or 17 more of these. Dive in. Watch them all. Lose your whole day to arc building. And if you're brand new to this channel, think about subscribing. It is my passion, and if you join me, we will become better builders together. Thank you for watching. I'm Unite the Clans, and I will see you in the next video.